Afternoon folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School out here at the Pathfinder School classroom. I wanted to go over a couple knots with you guys today. We did a basic useful knots video a while back. There's three other knots that I wanted to show you today and they're all jam type knots. And all of these knots are very useful and you can really cover a lot of the bases that you need for any knot with these three simple jam type knots. So let's go over those today one at a time. Stay with me and we'll get started. Okay, so let's start with probably the most popular jam knot, which is called the Canadian jam knot. All of these jam knots have one thing in common. They all start with a single overhand knot at the end of the line. And generally speaking for a jam knot, you're going to want to leave yourself a little bit of a tail. So I like to leave about an inch of tail and just tie an overhand knot in the line. So just twist it over turn an overhand knot in it and leave yourself some tail and tighten that down. For any jam knot application you're going to want that knot in the line. So once you have that for a Canadian jam knot you're going to put another overhand knot in the rope just a little ways down from the first one like this. Then you would take the tag end of your line and you would put it up through the bottom up through the bottom of the first one. So you've created basically a knot with a loop and a tag knot. And when you tighten that down, what's going to happen is this knot will tighten down on top of the first knot to create a jamming, just like that. And the harder you pull it, the tighter it gets. It's not going to come undone, but to get it undone easy, all you have to do is pull the tag. And that type knot works really, really well if you're trying to lash something or tighten something down on something else. So what we'll do is we'll take a wool blanket and I'll show you that knot as it would work for a lashing on like a bedroll situation. Okay, so we have our smaller knot and our jamming knot. Now we're going to wrap our line around our bedroll and come up through the bottom of this loop, just like this. And when we pull that down, it's going to tighten this knot on this one, just like this, and create that jam. And we can make that as tight as we want to make it, cinch it down really, really tight, it's not going to slip. If we want to get it undone, all we have to do is take this tag and pull on the tag. And that loosens everything up by pulling on that tag. Okay, so again, just to kind of go through this in a slow motion, we're going to tie our knot in the line, our overhand knot. Then we're going to come back and tie another knot right behind that, but we're not going to tighten it all the way up. Then we'll take our line and wrap it around whatever we're trying to lash together, whether that's our bedroll or whatever the case may be. We'll put this end of the line through from underneath, just like this. And when we pull that down, it's going to cinch one knot against the other knot, just like this. And when we want to get it undone, we simply pull on our tail, and that will release it. And then if we need to get that knot undone, we're just going to have to break its back right here, and just break it down to open it up. It doesn't get too awful bad tight. So that's the Canadian jam. And that works really good for bedroll things, lashing things, making a good tight knot right at the beginning like you would a timber hitch or something like that. Okay, the next knot I want to show you is what I call an end of the line loop jam. You're going to start off with the same scenario. You've got your tag end and you've got one overhand knot tied in your line. Now this loop is going to be a solid loop that you can use as a tightening loop like a bowline knot. This would take the place of like an end of the line loop for a bowline. What you're going to do is you're going to decide how big you want your loop and step back from that. You're going to turn the line over on itself and then bring the line up through the loop, just like this. And what's going to happen is when you pull this down tight, you're going to have a jam of that knot, 
And when you tighten that down, you're not going to pull this knot through this knot. So you have that loop that's not going to get any smaller, no matter how much pressure you put on it. But if I put this line back through it, I can use it for like a ridge line, like I would use a bow line for. And we'll show you that in a minute. Now, if I want to get it undone, here's the easy part. All I do is grab this line and the tag and pull. And it pops right out of the line. So it's a very easy knot to untie where you don't have to fuss around trying to loosen anything up or break the knots back or anything to get it undone. So let's look at this as if we were using it for a bow line around a tree. Okay, so if this were my tree that I wanted to put my ridge line around, I would come and turn my line over on itself, figure out how long I want that loop to be, bring that up through the bottom just like we did in slow motion, bring that through and pull it down, and now I have my self-tightening loop for my ridge line that no matter how hard I pull on this, this loop's not going to get any smaller, but it self-tightens around the tree. When I want to get that undone, all I have to do is come over here and pull them apart, and it pops it right out, and I'm ready to go. No muss, no fuss, no knots, I can't untie, and no cutting my line. Okay, the last jam knot that I want to show you, around here we call the Ohio Jam. It's based on a lark's head, and basically it's really good for attaching one line to another line. If you're trying to hang one line from another line, or if you are using toggles, for anything it works really good for toggles. So if you've got a V-notch cut, and again this is a very exaggerated uh, scenario because I want you to see how it works. So I've made everything extra large. I'm using paracord instead of bank line. I'm using a big giant stick instead of a small toggle. And I've cut a big V-notch in here. So again, same precedence as before. We're going to tie an overhand knot and leave ourselves a tail. And basically all we're going to do now is we're going to take this around our log, pulling this through just like we were going to make a lark's head knot except we're only going to have one line coming off the end of the lark's head knot so that when we tighten this down into our notch we end up with this knot locking in that V so that no matter how tight we pull it it can't come undone so we've created a jam type knot right there in that loop but if we need to get that undone it's pretty simple just to work it over the top just like that with your finger and flip it off and it's gone so again, basically we're making a lark's head knot to begin with, just like this. We're turning it over on itself with our tag. If we were making that lark's head, we'd turn it around this way to tighten it down. I'm tightening it on my thumb now. And I'd move that knot up to where when I pull that down, this knot gets jammed into that V just like that. So no matter how tight I pull it, this knot can't slip. This knot's got the weight on it. There's no way it's coming off. And if I need to get it undone, I can just flip it off there real easy like that. So again, on this big stick, we'll loop it around into our V-notch, just like this. We'll pull it through into a lark's head. And again, I'm just working the knot down. And when I pull it, it's going to lock that knot into that V in the lark's head right there, and there's no way that can come undone. But if I need to get it off of there for a quick adjustment, like a trap toggle or something like that, or I need to change my position or change the length of my line, it's very simple just to pop that off and the whole thing comes loose. Okay, so let's say we're setting up some kind of a trout line, something like that, where we are gonna tie a knot on here, but we may not wanna pull our whole line through the knot because we got hooks on there whatever the case may be. What we're going to do is we're going to take that line with the knot and just lay it over the line. And we're going to come around this way, in front, around, and down. And that's going to tie that exact same knot, just like that. So that when we tighten it down, it's going to accomplish exactly the same thing. This is going to get hung in this loop. But we didn't have to pull the entire line through there to try to get that manipulated if we had hooks on there. So again, we're going to come here. And it doesn't really matter which, way, which side you start on. I can come here and I can go behind, around, and back out. Just like that. 
and then I'll have that exact same type knot and just like I said work that small knot into the V that you're creating right there when you pull it tight and there's no way that dude's gonna come out of there really really good for a trout line setup as well all right folks I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School I appreciate you joining me today for these three useful jam knots I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, my instructors, affiliates, sponsors, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, folks.